This is a phonograph recording by J. Krishnamurti. I maintain that truth is a pathless land and cannot be approached by any path whatsoever, by any religion or by any sect. Truth being limitless, unconditioned, unapproachable by any path whatsoever, cannot be organized. Nor should any organization be, be for, formed to lead or coerce people along any particular path. First understanding that, you will see how impossible it is to organize a belief. A belief being purely an individual matter. You cannot, therefore, organize it. If you do, it becomes crystallized, dead. It becomes a creed, a sect, a religion to be imposed on others. This is what everyone throughout the world is attempting to do. Truth is narrowed down to make a plaything for those who are weak, for those who are only momentarily discontented. Truth cannot be brought down. Rather, the individual must make the effort to ascend to it. You cannot bring the mountain top to the valley. If you would attain to the mountain top, you must pass through the valley, climb the steep, unafraid of the dangerous precipices. Organizations cannot make you free, nor develop the inner man. No man from the outside can make you free, nor can organize worship, nor the immolation of yourself for a cause make you free. Therefore, I am not concerning myself with the founding of religion or new sects, or the establishment of new theories and new philosophy. On the contrary, I am concerning myself with only one essential thing, the true freedom of man. I would help him to break away from all limitation, to free himself from all fear. The fear of religion, from the fear of salvation, from the fear of spirituality, from the fear of love, from the fear of death, and from the fear of life itself. My desire then is that men should be unconditionally free. For I maintain that the only spirituality is the incorruptibility of that self which is in eternal. It is the harmony between reason and love. This is the highest reality. This is life itself. True perfection, therefore, the harmony of the self, has no law. This must, must not be translated to mean chaos. It is above all law and above all chaos because it is the seed of everything that from which all transformation arises and on which all things depend. If you desire that harmony of the self in which is true and the poise of that self in which, true, in which is true creation, you must care for that self which abides in each and be concerned with that, with that self. What is the self? The I. Where is the eye? The eye is the mind in thought. The eye is emotion in love. In establishing harmony between mind and emotion, in creating that eternal poise, lies the unfoldment of truth. If you would establish that harmony, then worship, prayers, mediators, the seeking of comfort are unnecessary. You must come to it naturally as the flower blossoms of a morning. The struggle is purely an individual matter. I cannot tell you how to struggle. I cannot create for you new systems which will guide you in your struggle, nor give you comfort. To attain that harmony, you must possess the quality of love, which is pure action. Your love at present is concerned with personal likes and dislikes. You dispute about what gods you should worship, what rites and ceremonies you should perform, what religions you should follow. This is the chief concern, instead of to acquire that quality of love, which is without division, without limitation. To acquire the harmony of pure action through struggle, through strife, through constant awareness of self-recollectedness, the mind and the heart of the same substance. And you must look to the purification of that substance and make that substance, which is thought, which is love, incorruptible. The moment there is in thought separation created by the mind, 
there is limitation and hence sorrow. The moment there is in love the creation of personal likes and dislikes, there is limitation and hence sorrow. To make the mind and the heart free of limitation, free of corruption, is happiness, liberation and truth.